Yes, I am back with another classic movie that I've never seen before. Now, if you've seen previous videos, what I normally do is I normally put um, I put a vote up on my Facebook page, my Instagram. I normally put two movies up, get people to pick, and then go with the majority uh, winner. Now, I didn't do that last week because of the previous week, which was a bit it, it, neither here nor there. I decided to go another week without uh, putting that vote up because I feel like I just want to pick the film that I am, you know, sort of emotionally ready to be invested in that week. Instead of going for one that I'm being told to watch, it makes it a bit harder to kind of, I don't know, really get into it. So this week I just chose my own movie and I went with one that I've been waiting to watch for such a long time. It's It's one of the ones that I... I put on my list first because it's it's one that I literally knew nothing about. Now a lot of these classics I I go into already kind of knowing the plot and the way things are gonna go, but this week Cape Fear. Now this is the nineteen ninety one uh, Martin Scorsese version. I didn't go for the original because I don't know, I just kinda I wanted to go with this one first because uh, remakes aren't always better and this one does get a lot of plaudits so i went with this one because you know it's obviously a remake that had done quite well so i wanted to watch this one first see how i felt before i go to the original version and maybe do another classic movie uh review but yeah cape fear robert de niro <sighs> wow Now, yeah, first up, uh, the character of Max Cady himself, uh, Robert De Niro, he gets released from prison after 14 years. Uh, 14 years, he feels not... Fourteen years he feels um very unjust. Now he's had a lot of time to kind of stew and you know uh, do a lot of reading, as he mentions. He reads up on a lot of law, and he feels like he was unjustly given that amount of time. Now, as we find out later on during the movie, he did rape and assault a sixteen-year-old girl, but he he tried to plead that it wasn't rape because she was so-called promiscuous. And obviously, he's got this idea into his head because he is clearly psychotic. You see throughout this whole movie, he is just, he's a sandwich short of a picnic, this guy. But, not but, <laughs> I didn't want that to come out weird, like, uh, you know, I'm rooting for this guy. But Robert De Niro's uh, very, very charismatic in this movie. He's very charming. He's very almost lovable, you know, the whole way through the movie, you know what he's doing, he's stalking um, Sam, he's stalking the main, the other main character played by Nick Nolte, um, he was his lawyer, he is stalking him because he wants him to lose the way that he did, you know, he wants him to lose part of his life the way that he did and, you know, feel that sense of loss. And so he's stalking him uh, to eventually, as we find out, kill his wife and daughter. I don't know where it's never made clear whether he wants to kill them or just you know mess with them and kill him. It, I, I don't think it's ever really made clear, but he spends the whole movie just you know relentlessly stalking them and torturing them mentally, not physically. He never really lays a finger on them throughout the whole movie, except for the last sort of fifteen minutes, the penultimate. Of this movie, spoiler alert. But yeah, he spends the whole time just, you know, harassing them. And you know that he's a bad guy. You know that what he's doing is completely wrong. But there's just something about the way that Robert De Niro portrays the character is very 
yeah, like I say, he's charismatic. You can't help but sort of go, oh, he's cool. Like, again, you shouldn't like this character, but it's the same with many villains in many movies. You know, just look at comic books. Look at characters like the Joker. You can't help but fall in love with, you know, Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker. That was Oscar winning. You know, you can't help but sort of feel for these characters. So, yeah, Robert De Niro really brings a, a side to this story that, you know, makes you kind of question yourself. Now, Nick Nolte, um, fine. He did really good. He very, he really hands it up quite a lot in this movie, I found. He really, like... <laughs> Like I get he's going through a lot of stress, but he gets he gets very sort of weird throughout the whole movie. It's it's very it's almost funny to watch. Like he's going through this quite distressing time and he's obviously under a lot of pressure and brilliantly acted as well, you know. You can't fault the guy for the way that he betrayed that character, but yeah, a lot of it did really make me laugh. I actually probably shouldn't have been laughing by this point. But yeah, his wife and daughter are also under under quite a bit of pressure. Uh, his daughter Juliette Lewis, uh, played by Juliette Lewis, absolutely incredible. I love that woman. She's such a great actress. I'm not sure how old she was when she filmed this movie, but you can tell she's very young. But she is so good, like far beyond her years. She is so the way she sort of plays a <laughs> shy teenager because she even kind of falls in love with Max Cady. You know he he's like mentally torturing the torturing the parents but at one point he comes across her like he tricks her into meeting him in the uh the like the basement of a school and he he sort of romances her like he he really like puts on like this kind of debonair act with her and she actually falls for him like you can see it in her character like at the end of the interaction like all he does is kisses her but she runs off and she starts crying. So she, it seems like she's upset by the whole situation. But then you find out later she's actually quite... She's enamoured with this guy for absolutely crazy reasons. I, d I don't understand where the hell that came from. But like she played it really, really well. And it was really, it was really intense to watch. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the lawyer, he, he obviously... He can't prove any of this to the law because... Um, Max Cady, he's, he's doing a lot of these things knowing that he can get away with them. Like he, I think he, he rapes one of the lawyer's co-workers, but she won't testify because she doesn't want to be embarrassed because she knows like the, the system. She knows that she will be, you know, she will be put on trial essentially as well as Max Cady. And I think he kind of works it out and that's why he singles her out and he attacks her. Also, she was having an affair with Nick Nolte's character, Sam. So, yeah, it, this guy's just mentally torturing this family and he never gets physical until, yeah, like the very, I'd say the last kind of half an hour of the movie, uh, there's a big elaborate scheme where Sam, he hires a private detective, they're hiding in their house and they're pretending that he's gone away so that Katie will break in. And they've wired up all of the doors and the windows with piano, uh, not piano wire, a lot of fishing wire. <laughs> and they're hiding in the house. The, the the private eye is waiting there with a gun to kind of catch KD in the act and kill him. And it, it turns out that KD was in the house the whole time. You know, he must have known a secret way to get inside the house and he was already in there. <laughs> uh, the, the private eye goes into the kitchen and the housemaid is there, the, the Spanish housemaid. And he speaks to the Spanish housemaid, like, how are you? And she sort of <laughs> responds. I can't even remember what she said. But she responds. And you can't quite see her. The, the camera's not focused on her. And a, a lot of the other movie, you it, just quick sidetrack. The, the cinematography of this movie is absolutely incredible. Um, I think Scorsese used a kind of widescreen um, camera specifically for this movie because of the way that it it sets the scenes up. There's a lot of time where... The characters are in the forefront and whatever's in the background is still clear, but you're not focused on them. And it almost looks like it's on a, a green screen, you know, and it's 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 really weird. But, yeah, you, you see the private eye and the, the, the housemaid in the background straight away. You know, it's Katie, you know, it's him. 
and he turns around and he's got this wig on and he's wearing the maid's clothes. I absolutely creased out. I thought it was so funny. It got to the point of parody, but I just could not help but laugh because it was just so incredible. And then he kills the private eye and then you find out the maid was already dead. So the family get in the car and run away. Now, I, I kind of thought to myself, they just run away from the scene of a murder with, you know, because the, the dad, also the lawyer, he goes crazy and he sort of grabs hold of the body and he's like, oh no, what's going on? He slips over in the blood. He picks up the gun that Katie shot the private eye with. It's like, you're going to get done for that murder now. You know that, right? And he runs off with his family. And they drive away to the coast where they've got their own boat. Max Cady, the whole time, was underneath their car. He had tied himself to the bottom of the car with a belt and he followed them. And now I know where that Simpsons episode come from. All this time, I, I didn't know. I knew it was called Cape Fear, but I didn't know that it was linked. You, you know when you just don't put two and two together? But it's from that Simpsons episode. And you know what one I'm talking about. <laughs> and I know it's funny because I know later on I'm going to edit that clip in and it still makes me laugh just thinking about it. But yeah, Katie follows them. He gets on the boat, follows them out onto the water and there's this big scuffle, this big kerfuffle. You know, Katie ties the, the dad up and then he he tortures the, the, the mum and the daughter. The daughter throws boiling water in his face and he doesn't even flinch because, you know, he's conditioned himself in prison to not feel pain. And then it's just absolutely crazy. And then um, and then the daughter, uh, she spits. No, she fires uh, lighter fluid into his face when he's lighting a cigar. So he jumps off the boat and into the water. So they're safe, but then he gets back onto the boat somehow, you know, with a tiny little bit of rope. It's crazy. And then he brings the dad in again for his trial. And he puts the dad on trial. And the thing that made me laugh about this scene is... Every time he turns, there's that noise, that noise, you know, that sort of the sort of parody noise. And he does this and it's almost like he's talking to the camera. It's so ridiculously parody, but at the same time, it's so incredibly serious and you can't help but laugh for both sides of it just because of how serious it is. And you're like, oh, my God, this is this is so intense. And you're laughing because of the parody side to it. In the end. Max Cady gets handcuffed to the boat and the boat crashes and the boat sinks. And then right at the end of the movie, we just hear Juliet Lewis with a monologue basically saying, we never spoke about this again, but I still remember. It's like, what? why would you not speak about this? Go to therapy. The first thing you'd want to do, because they already mentioned in the movie that they've been to therapy. Like the parents have been because of the dad's betrayals and stuff. And, this is the thing you go to therapy for. This is the thing you need to see a specialist about after this this crazy man torturing your family physically and mentally for the past, you know, week or so. It's crazy. It really is crazy. That's the one. That's the time you want to go and see someone. But yeah, this movie, I thought it was going to be very kind of emotionally intense, but it wasn't. It it. It was on the kind of border, but like I say, if Robert De Niro wasn't playing the character the way that he did, it would be so much more distressing. But I don't know, there's just something about him, the way that he'd done it. You can't help but kind of fall in love with a guy, and it was just incredible. Absolutely brilliant movie. If I, gave, if I did do uh, ratings, I'd give it a 5 out of 5 or a 10 out of 10, because it's so good. The way it's shot, the way it's acted... Just the whole thing. And now I do really want to watch the original just to see the kind of contrast between them. I hope it's as good. I really do. But yeah, Cape Fear, absolutely brilliant. Robert De Niro, class act, man. 
if he could have been the Joker in the early 90s, that would have been incredible because he has that kind of smile and that kind of look, you know. Would have been intense. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, yeah, Kate Fear, great. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy the way that I do these reviews. It's just kind of waffling for 10 minutes, but I love it. It's fun. If you, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to give me a like, maybe subscribe to my channel, and I will speak to you next week. Goodbye.